So the next session will be presented by Ali El Driani. And thank you so much, Ali, for joining us from Lebanon in that early time. And uh, he will be presenting on remote instruction or instructing remotely. Um, sorry, that would be the, from the experience taking on spring 2020 educators experience. So over to you, Ali. Your microphone is muted, Ali. If you can please unmute the microphone. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, and you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity and it's really uh, great to be uh, with, uh, with this nice group and share uh, experiences from different parts of, uh, of the world. Um, actually, this uh, is based on uh, the uh, experience that we passed through uh, at our uh, uni during the spring uh, semester. Now, the main purpose of this uh, research or this work was to capture the experience from the educators' perspectives and viewpoint and how did they uh, experience all what happened and how did they see things what were the main challenges and what were the, 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 the good points and the uh, challenges faced during this uh, experience. Uh, but before, before we, we, we go into the, the actual uh, details of the findings or uh, the insights from the educators, it's so important to put things in perspectives. Because you know, coming from a management uh, HR background, we always see things from a wider and a, a smaller perspectives. There are environment uh, factors and forces that, uh, uh, that controls and that they had influence on the experience of educators and learners and universities and the administrative staff at any university. Now, ignoring what is happening around us, uh, it means that we are assuming that we're in a perfect scenario, we're in a perfect situation where everyone is, is, is free-headed and fully focused on what is happening. So understanding the macro uh, perspective of what happened is so important. Now, in, in a country like Lebanon, uh, let me give you like uh, uh, prior to the move online, what we were having in, in my country in Lebanon and around us as a university. The first case of COVID-19 was discovered in February 2019. That's when the Ministry of Health announced the first case uh, officially in uh, Lebanon. Now, uh, we were almost one month through the semester. So we were running physical classes. We were normal teaching, we're, we're, we're in our game, we're in a safe zone. So we were almost one uh, semester, uh, one month to the semester. Now our semester here is around four months. So it's almost quarter the semester uh, uh, on campus. Now, Lebanon was passing through a very uh, challenging times, economic, financial, monetary. Uh, uh, we were at uh, some times with no government, the government resigned. And we were having protests on the streets. So people were out on the streets uh, uh, complaining against the government and the corruption in the government. I'm just giving you the, the context where we moved to teach and we moved to uh, uh, interact online with our, uh, which is very important for us. It's so important to look at this. Now, we were seeing lots of businesses closing, lots of employee layoffs, so parents, so instructors, so many universities as well. They had to cut some of the, the contacts of their staff as well and some of the instructors, whether full-time or uh, part-time instructors, who were having a high unemployment rate. Uh, in Lebanon, we have an internet issue. We have an infrastructure. We have technology and IT infrastructure with a very, 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 very weak infrastructure and uh, bad for internet and for the uh, information technology. We have electricity uh, power cut. I'm not lamenting and complaining here, so please don't, uh, don't think that I'm just complaining about the situation. But this is the context where uh, we moved to teach online and we should as well look at this uh, seriously. So we have electricity power cuts uh, in Lebanon. Uh, and uh, the government took the decision to lock down the uh, country. So to close uh, shops, to close malls and supermarkets and universities and organizations where 
uh, the country is in a total uh, lockdown. Now, another important issue is that we don't have a, a legislation for online teaching. So online teaching is not recognized by the official bodies, by the government and by the uh, ministry. Uh, another important issue here in Lebanon that we don't have a quality assurance standards and audits. So we don't have like in the UK or in Australia, like body that governs and makes audit and sets standards for uh, for uh, quality uh, teaching. I mean, talking traditional teaching, uh, now we're talking about online, so the situation is even uh, worse. Another important thing here is the corruption and the fraud in the higher ed. Uh, the higher education in Lebanon in the past year was struck by a wave of uh, corruption and fraud in lots of universities, uh, private universities especially. Uh, so the trust in the higher ed uh, dropped uh, in the eyes of the public. Uh, in Lebanon, uh, to my knowledge, we don't have an online teaching experiences at universities. So we don't have universities in Lebanon offering online courses uh, with uh, degrees uh, in, in, in any of the private or the uh, formal uh, university. The majority of our instructors in the majority of universities are part-time instructors. And here we know the full time to students ratio, a standard. In Lebanon, unfortunately, the, the majority of our instructors are part-time instructors. Uh, we don't have a pre-requirements uh, for teaching at university in Lebanon, like teaching diploma or specific uh, courses before you can join the uni and teach at the uni. We have in Lebanon around 60 universities for a population of 5 million, uh, around 5 million and around 150,000 students uh, at the uni level uh, and 40% 40, 40 of those students are in the Lebanese university which is the only uh, official uh, governmental uh, university and 20% of the population is from the foreign uh, students. So this is the context uh, prior to moving uh, online in Lebanon. In sum, we were passing in a very unrest uh, situation. Environment forces downturn indicators at all levels. We have the COVID-19 lockdown and uh, I mean families and instructors and everyone in the country was fearing for their health and their safety. So this is a concern that was in the mind of everyone. We had protests in the street and road closures on a daily basis. So people even were not able to arrive to their work because of the road closures. And uh, we don't have a suitable uh, IT infrastructure and internet and the lack of legal and quality insurance uh, assurance uh, standards. So at Al Ma'arif University, we were struck by the crisis as instructors, as administrative staff. Uh, we didn't have a prior online uh, course uh, uh, experience across the university. Now, yes, we had some initiatives at some of the faculties, at some uh, I mean, individual staff within the university. However, we did not have as a uni uh, an experience with online uh, teaching and online uh, courses. We were forced to move online without prior plan and preparation. So we were, it was a reaction to what happened. We didn't have time to plan. We didn't have time to prepare. Uh, and no proper training was conducted to our staff. We didn't have time to train our instructors and train our staff. Plus, the remote working conditions because add to this we were working from home and that's another burden and another layer which is virtual working and virtual collaboration which is a challenge for us and our uh, instructors as a new institution uh, established in 2005 uh, we were we had only 10 weeks remaining for the semester so all this and we have only left 10 weeks to uh, uh, finish the semester. We have around 900 students at that time and around 170 courses across different uh, faculties. And we had lots of senior projects going on with our students and variance courses and a different uh, nature and different uh, 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 structure. Of course, our target as a university is the lower income family. That's another thing to think about. Uh, okay. So in terms of the objectives of the work and in terms of the objectives of the research, we wanted to examine the experience of educators or instructors at Al Ma'arif University amid the pandemic and their approaches 
to teaching during the spring 2019 academic semester. That's one of the purposes of the, uh, the work and to use the results to uh, conduct a training need analysis to prepare an action plan in order to deliver a better experience and results in the coming uh, semester. Now, of course, we use the exploratory, inductive, qualitative, focusing on semi-structured interviews and focused group interviews with uh, a huge number of part and full-time uh, instructors and using the convenient sampling uh, technique. Now, uh, I, I'll move now to the key findings and the key uh, results. Now, what did we find? Uh, uh, instructors struggled in engaging their students. They were uh, having a disengaged audience. Students were concerned about their health, concerned about their safety. They have internet issues. They don't know what is this online thing. It's a change for them. So they were fearing this. Some of them, they actually dropped out. Some of them, they were uh, suffering from symptoms of burnout, of uh, physical, mental uh, breakdown and similar to instructors and staff as well. So the key challenge for instructors was to engage with students. Another key issue was besides the concern to engage and besides the concerns to deliver, instructors themselves were, were fearing for their health and fearing for their safety because of the COVID-19 thing. And because they were working from home, uh, they didn't have the facilities at home, the, the needed facilities at home. And an important thing that as well they didn't have is the physical well-being check. Okay, the physical well-being check. Are they able to deliver lectures from home? Do they have the proper physical setup at home? I mean, let me give you an example here. For example, in the UK, they did a research and they found out that uh, employees working from home, they suffered from back pains. You know why the reason why they suffered from back pain and shoulder pains? It's because they were doing work on the uh, dining tables and the, the dining tables. And usually the, the design of the dining table is just higher than the uh, work uh, table. So they, they, were, they were uncomfortable in the physical uh, place where they were working. The same as our instructors, they had the same insight. They were suffering from this at home. Uh, uh, and because some of them, they teach in different and in other unis, universities, they had different arrangements for this online. Now, some universities are using this software, and other universities are using a different software. You know, so in some cases, an instructor was using two or three different platforms or systems uh, at the same time parallel to this. So this was another challenge for them. Uh, 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 now, remote uh, teaching uh, made some students remotely, okay, so they, 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 we had issues with inclusiveness, some of the, our students were remote totally, they were out of the reach from their instructors, and because, they, because instructors were using the classical pedagogy and the methods uh, in the physical uh, teaching, uh, they struggled in maintaining this momentum on online uh, platforms. So they were confused. Should they continue with the same approach? Should they use the same methods? So should they use the same assessment uh, issues? So you see at some points or some cases, a drop in the confidence of the instructor where uh, we used to have uh, instructors with a high student evaluation during the physical uh, classes. But suddenly, this, the same instructor was struggling online. Lots of complaints coming from students, a drop in students' evaluation for the same instructor uh, online. So that was a challenge for the instructors. And the tools, you know, the focus on the tools and the technology was more than the content and the philosophy itself. So you'll see that instructors were just saying that, okay, we knew about this tool, we knew about this uh, technology, while the issue is not in the tool and it's not in the technology. The Zoom is there, the team is there, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Microsoft, the Google Meet is there, and that's enough. So the focus, instead of being on the philosophy and the method and approach, it was on the tools and the gadgets and the technology. Now, we were seeing a drop in student satisfaction. We conducted a survey uh, for our students at the 
third week of being online and we've seen a drop in the satisfaction of students with this experience lots of concerns lots of worries lots of uh, complaints uh, and uh, these things now instructors as well were concerned about the reward and how their performance will be assessed okay so all this effort all this uh, this investment in this online and preparation for the online classes because you know it takes more time than physical class now instructors were wondering would they get the same pay would they receive an increase in the pay taking into consideration that the financial economic challenges in the country so they were concerned about the return on investment what is it in it for me as an instructor is it worth this investment of time and effort plus they were like students facing technical issues at their houses and their homes so they were having internet cuts and electricity uh, cuts now uh, concerns about the learning uh, outcome attainment now if you ask any instructors about the spring experience they would tell you at at most okay students got 40 percent of the learning objectives so that's an issue because the main objective of a course is the learning objectives. Okay, whatever the learning objectives are, are where their attributes, where their competencies, where their uh, uh, skills. However, instructors, they thought that they did not deliver 100% or at least a high percentage of uh, learning outcome delivery. Then there is this issue of serious plagiarism and cheating uh, issue. Instructors struggle uh, to deal with plagiarism and cheating. They did not know how to do it with this. Uh, in, in many cases, they didn't know that students were cheating. That's even worse. So, but still, they could not deal with this. They didn't know how to deal with this. They didn't have the needed uh, tools and the needed softwares to deal with uh, cheating. So there was a lot of suspicious about the results, the actual results, the actual performance of uh, students. They were having lots of students drop out and tardiness in terms of students attending. I mean, uh, Nahina mentioned the, the issue of the, were they online or not? Uh, she, she was not sure that students were online with her in the class or not. Well, students were arriving late to online sessions, were not attending online sessions, were missing on submissions, were missing on exams and quizzes, and instructors really struggled in dealing with this. And you know, what to do? with someone who's telling you that I did not submit because I had an electricity issue. Should you give a chance uh, how you deal with this? So student instructors were suffering with this little time to prepare for the, I mean, uh, uh, you mentioned about the social constructivism and the formative assessments and giving time for collaboration and discussions and creating a community among the students. Now, instructors didn't have time to think about this even they were concerned about the, uh, the delivery of the content, okay? the delivery of the chapters, the delivery of the learning objectives. And they themselves, by the way, uh, the majority of instructors, by the way, they didn't have a previous experience in delivering online courses. Not only that, they didn't have a previous experience in attending online courses. And that's a problem and that's an issue. So no prior experience in online teaching and no prior training uh, for them. Although they considered this an opportunity to development, however, for them, it was really an overwhelming uh, experience, a challenging experience, and uh, uh, they all preferred face-to-face -face teaching. <laughs> so after all, they prefer the face-to-face -face teaching. They're, they're still convinced that the face-to-face -face teaching is better for uh, for the, uh, the delivery of now in some the key findings of our work with instructors and the inputs that we got from our instructors that first it was a reactive no time for planning no prior training received overwhelming experience the lockdown work uh, working from home issue we need to think that this is a serious and a major issue for instructors. The kids at home, family members at home, uh, it's not the ideal situation for online teaching. Uh, I know in, in ideally online teaching, ideally preparing for an online course, you need to have the proper physical setup and you need to have the 
the safety and the psychological and the mental stability around you to be able to prepare an online course and to be able to go with your students online. Now, this was not the case in our uh, spring 2019 experience. Instructors themselves were locked at home in self-isolation. And well, some of them, they had COVID-19 infections, so they were treated uh, and they were hospitalized. So this is another issue. So instructors were suffering from uh, burning out and lots of challenges. And that's why for me and for, I mean, my observation that it was not really an online teaching and online learning more than lecturing virtually, delivering lectures virtually to students. So that's why I'm very careful in using the term. I'm not saying it's an online learning. It was not an online learning experience, a fully online learning experience, as much as a, a delivering lectures online to uh, students the traditional way, using the traditional uh, methods and using the traditional tools and using the traditional assessment uh, approaches to uh, online. Now, uh, uh, after doing this work and after doing this training need analysis, we had to upgrade our online teaching and assessment with the needed ICT uh, support and ICT infrastructure. We had to work as a university on upgrading our uh, internet capacities, our server capacities, uh, we need to endorse we needed to endorse some tools some new software some new applications we need to we need, had to upgrade this uh, infrastructure and we need to institute instituting the students engagement because students engagement is not only the work of the instructor it's the work of the instructor it's the work of the faculty administration it's the work of the university the student affairs office the uh, the uh, marketing department is the work of everyone in the university and even the IT department. So we had to to do this as an institution. So following with the students and engaging with the students as as a university and uh, as a learner centered approach. And we had to think of moving from remote instructions and teaching virtually to actual online. Uh, teaching and uh, preparing and delivering a better experience for our uh, uh, students. Now, uh, uh, now, in terms of future research, uh, it's so important to, to look at students' perspectives. Now, here we're talking about us instructors, part-timers, university. However, what the person who's missing from the picture uh, is the student. And you know the challenges that the, the, the lecturers or the instructors mention, you have, you have to multiply them with thousand uh, in terms of students as well. So the students, they have their issues and their challenges. So we need to account for students' views and insights. We need to look at the senior management point of view as well, because you know, uh, uh, universities were suffering economically as well. Uh, no funds, uh, no money to invest in training, no money to invest in developing the staff, laying off lots of the staff, cutting the salaries of many of the instructors. So you have to as well look at the senior and the top management, how they are saying things. It's so important to uh, conduct a quantitative or a mixed methods approach where you do a, a research uh, with a purpose to generate the results over the population and to as well account for different stakeholders here. You have the families, you have the community expectations, you have the industry that's so worried about the graduate uh, competencies as well. Uh, and then uh, creating and debating the results and bringing people from different, uh, uh, different stakeholder groups to debate the results and create a discussion. And as, as a further quantitative analysis, it's good to do a factor analysis in order to clearly identify what are the factors that are making or influencing or affecting students' experiences and uh, uh, satisfaction and uh, engagement. Uh, well, that's, that's in a nutshell uh, my, uh, my presentation. Uh, Nahina, did I cross the, the time limit for my presentation? Uh but, but thank you, Ali, a little bit, but thank you so much for this one. I, I believe with this presentation, you're speaking the heart of every academic who are, who are doing online sessions. And I was so into your presentation because 
I was just feeling, wow, that is exactly how I felt, uh, not in, in terms of experience, but some of the feelings, because yet every country has different setups. Um, is that you know, when, when Martin was just talking about this community yeah. and collaboration, no, it's an ideal, I know it's, 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 it's perfect to do it. However, I was, was recalling the situation of, of the instructors and situation of the learners and the country, and I was wondering, you know, where, where is the time to do this? Where is the perfect situation where everyone is into learning and free-minded and focused? Uh, plus, not to forget the issue of the course teaching load for instructors in Lebanon is different from Australia and is different from the UK. So many of our instructors yeah. are fully loaded in teaching. So they mm -hmm. have at least three to four teaching courses per semester. Mm -hmm. how, so, mm -hmm. how an instructor, plus you mentioned the ideal class size or class number which is 2021, 20, that's not the case. We have, it's not in our university. I mean, we have classes mm. of 40 and 50 and 60 now uh, in yeah. Lebanon because of, because of the cuts and because of the savings. So yeah. we need to, the, the, the right uh, setup in order to do this. Sure. Now, thank you so much, Ali. And I can see that everyone is appreciating a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'll just rush into the next presenter and maybe thank if we you have so time, much for your time towards the I end. Didn't time for <laughs> That's yeah, for totally me. fine. Towards the end, if we get time, we can take more questions for Ali. Um, thank, thank you, so Ali. Much. And we will move on to next lecture, uh, next uh, presentation by Hassan Rakim. Uh, the presentation is Innovative Assessments for Quality Learning Experience. Uh, over to you, Hassan. Um, thank you, Nahila. Um, 